Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while since I've posted. Uh, summer's kind of taken over the life here. Uh, however, um, I want to hopefully uh, do a couple of videos today to post. Um, the uh, first one that I'm going to look into is something actually that's not necessarily uh, a request from a viewer, but some interesting commentary back and forth from some of the comments that I was viewing. And getting to the comments point, I want to point out, I do try to uh, find all the comments and respond, uh, hopefully to um, provide some meaning to the things that you're interested in. And uh, me being a 40-something, getting into the YouTube thing, I find a lot of the comments are embedded in other strings. So I find them later, so again, uh, apologies. And they do get looked at, it's just sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to uh, call them out. So this one actually is about uh, emotional unavailability. So what I've noticed in quite a few of the uh, comments is just uh, other t MBTI types that uh, are making potential comments about their experiences with INTJs. And it's really interesting and it's a great area to explore because it's nice to hear other people's point of views as well. Uh, we're all living in uh, one big social circle. So one that came was interesting was one that came up about the concept of INTJs being simply emotionally unavailable and how they this particular individual likes them for company at times however find they like to potentially take advantage of their emotional um, limitations and uh, actually would rather go for feely types and uh, I hope I'm paraphrasing properly but uh, again I'm going to be speaking a little bit from notes because I wanted to put some ideas together but uh, there was an interesting comment uh, that came back from another uh, commenter Mark O'Brien, so thank you all of you for your comments. Um, but he made a good point on the idea of being emotional and emotionally avail available as two separate things. And I find that interesting because that is uh, definitely true. It is something where the folks that say, we can use the cliche that they wear their heart on the sleeve, they're excellent at being able to communicate the feelings that they have in a way that makes sense. And from my personal experience, that is something that does not come naturally to me at all. Uh, it always comes through the logic based, and I've spoken to that earlier, and I'm sure other INTJs out there have maybe some similar um, experiences with that. Uh, the idea though of being emotionally unavailable, um, that's interesting to me because I could see that point. I could see that say other uh, MBTI types seeing an individual with INTJ characteristics would see that as emotionally unavailable. So I'm going to go through a couple of ways of perhaps there is some emotional unavailability and also uh, what we've spoken to before about the idea that regardless of how we come across we are big mushy insides of of emotions that we just have a difficult time accessing and uh, speaking to appropriately. So uh, when I'm going to speak again to the younger side of things and by no means am I trying to stereotype all young INTJs. Uh, everyone has their own maturity uh, progression and I'm just kind of speaking from experience from my own standpoint. Uh, speaking to the unavailable uh, emotionally, uh, I'm wondering if, like for myself, if there is that idea, so say in your 20s and you're going and you're doing 20 something things and I, I felt for myself that INTJ, my personality didn't really fit 
the 20 something model. And again, this is years ago, so it's a bit different. Uh, but the idea of just being superficial and partying and by all means, I like to have fun, but um, you, in my mind, I wanted some substance as well. So the idea of relationships and being emotionally unavailable, I could see that for myself because a lot of the individuals that were uh, available to me in my social circle and just where what I was doing at that time, they did not seem like an exactly soft spot to land. And I found that they did not have the similar interests that I did. And therefore, if I don't have a logical um, attraction to them and an intellectual attraction to them, I would come across as more emotionally unavailable, mostly because I just didn't have interest in dealing with, and I'm going to say stereotypical, but uh, more of the flighty behaviors that happen potentially in your 20s and what you experience with making sense of yourself and being free from your parents and that type of thing and making sense of where you're going forward and who you are as a person. Uh, and then also we as INTJs through our different, uh, the strengthening of emotions, our stack for building that muscle of emotions comes later. It's not right in your younger years. So depending on the age of the person that is expressing these frustrations of, you know, the unavailability of emotions for some INTJs, that might be tied in because, because we don't have it in just at the surface that we can speak to and act passionate and maybe more of the say dramatic things that other INTJs or sorry, other um, personality types might uh, display. It could come across as yeah, there's, you don't have that uh, connection. And I find that it was only through time. You can't, no INTJ can push it. I have to say there's a ton of self-aware people that are watching this channel and I'm just blown away by some of their perspectives at their young ages and your heads and tails above where I was at that age. So kudos to you. But in general, a lot of self-awareness, it, it takes time. You have to open that Pandora's box and deal with it as it comes when you're ready to. Uh, the other thing too that I wanted to mention, to, uh, this is for me speaking personally, the idea of an emotional, emotionally overrun person, someone that speaks quick with emotion without taking it back and and chewing on stuff. I found that uh, somewhat, I'm going to say weak, and that's really harsh, but that is the way I felt back then. So when I saw people just react, I did the logical deduction is like in my head where couldn't that person take a couple minutes and uh, think about that before they responded. So that may tie to the idea of the emotional unavailability because you're not snapping and reacting to other people, maybe trying to push your buttons to try and get you to get an emotion out. Uh, so yeah, I, again, I'm looking at my notes quick. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, the idea of knowing the way your brain is wired is pretty uh, big for me. That was something that really helped to understand my emotional side. So again, I've spoken to mind-body connection, but understanding the neurobiological side, and I'm not going to get into tech stuff here, but uh, it is one thing I've noticed that was a tool for me in understanding and working with the emotion side as I've gotten forward or gone forward in my life is the idea of, I want to say it's fake it till you make it. And I'm not saying that in that you're not, you're faking emotions, but say if uh, there's negative emotions that are impacting you, you're not wanting to necessarily put those out into the world. You're trying to process them on your own. So the idea that you as an INTJ can 
can use your analysis um, strengths to portray a more positive idea of how you're feeling. It's not necessarily being um, uh, disingenuous, but it is more for general people that you don't are you aren't personally intimate with. They don't know your everyday, and you don't need to share that with them as say maybe some other people do like to do and so what getting to the point of the analytics side I found this interesting because it is uh, somewhat uh, researched in the idea of the brain synapses uh, starting to fire in different areas so the idea of faking it you're using the positive side which builds certain chemicals in your brain that start steering you in the direction of taking a look outside of the potential upsetting emotions or that type of thing that you may or may not be trying to process and actually using that as a strength. So using your analysis uh, to take a look and step outside that and that's getting into that whole self-awareness. So again, there is so many people that put comments on this channel and uh, the uh, their amazing capacity to understand and take a step back. I think that's a huge piece in understanding uh, for myself how to handle emotions dispassionately and not get a, totally involved in them and take them for what they are and know they're there and they're okay but you don't have to come across as emotional just to appease somebody else who wants you to look and act a certain way. You're, again, great just the way you are. It's the whole point of being unique people. So anyways, this is a very long one and I apologize, but uh, comments, as always, love to hear any sort of video requests. Make sure you put video requests before it so then I can quickly flag it. And uh, thanks for much, so much for watching.